apply. And this is a, a, a story that I think is true, but I wouldn't I would swear to it. Chandler Springs was named after old man Chandler that he lived down in Wetumpka. He had a, a lot of stomach problems, whatever, and he heard that the Indians up here, which lived and fished and hunted all through here, and we have the confluence of Blue Creek, which goes through our place and joins the Talladega Creek down here. All this bottom lands, Diane and her family has found arrowheads and all this stuff, so it was a hunting village at one time. So anyway, old man Chandler came up here to talk to the Indians about, he had heard they had some kind of herbs and medicine that would cure his stomach problems. So he comes, rides his horse up here, and he found, comes up here and talks to the old Indians around. So they put him on this uh, yellow root, which we have grown all along the creek, and all the old folks used it, and a lot of herbologists still use this stuff. Watch out, I've used it myself. So he came up here, and the old Indians got this yellow root and got him in it. So he takes some here and he takes some back home, and it cured him. So he goes back home and gets his family and moves his family up here, and that's how Chandler Springs started. Diana's got a piece of furniture up here where the old original man Chandler built for us. We have up in the cabin that uh, probably, what, 150 years ago? A long, long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was James and Mordecai. Actually, the this says they come from the yellow water. Yeah. It was at the spring. But it was, was that actually, sulfur? It, yeah, but it was yeah. actually the yellow <coughs> uh, The Chandler family, which I do know the descendants of the Chandler family, I knew a lot of them. I always say it was the yellow root that he came. But here's the here's the story. Can you can you take pictures of pages and then read it? Mm -hmm. There's the story of Chandler Springs right there. But Miss Jimson has actually got yellow water, but it was actually the yellow root. Yeah, and this this water up around Claremont Springs, they had about seven or eight different kinds of water within a small area there. And some of it's some bad. It's like you know the sulfur water, the iron water, and all this other junk. So people came here as a, kind of like a spa. They had this women pool up there in the yeah, dance pavilion, and it was a big to do back in those days. And they had these springs separated there with water coming out, you know, each one of them, which are they're still there, except they're ill kept. They're not, you know, like they were for for the visitors and to come around and, and check them out and look at them and even use some of the water in the things, I guess. Well, they did use the water. That was the whole point. Oh, yeah, of, yeah, they of did. Claremont and Chandler Springs. Yeah, it was kind of like was, a spa. It was a, it was a health spa. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was big back then. Yeah. That, yeah. Now, Claremont, Chandler Springs was never anything but except a, a community of people that lived and worked around here and whatever, I guess, in all these mines and farming and liquor making, as Hill Southern would call it. Including a lot of our kin folks, is that you know if you know any of the old folks in any part of this world, your kin folks dealt with white lightning at one time or another, like my family did, and a lot of other families. They had to feed their families during the depression. They could sell whiskey and and do that or whatever. So anyway, back to the old Indian tales. I don't know a lot of Indian tales about this, but you go across. The mountain over here to McKeldry, which is another small community between this other Ironton and Mudford. There's this called McKeldry. There's a the old Indian chief Chinnabis Lockta's grave is there. <coughs> it's got a big square, ten by ten concrete, and then it's got you know this uh, thing on the top of it with a a bronze. Uh, what did what did you call that? A plate, I guess you would call it. It's got it's a got, bronze plaque. Yeah, it's like a plaque that's got his picture on it. Hmm. He was buried there, and another. This is another tale that, in fact, I saw this in the Live magazine back in the forties. That Chief Chinnabis Lockta was going right in front of where my brother owns a farm right now, and I remember the tree. It was bigger around her than you, you know this. It was dead when I remember it, but it was right in the middle of the road, dirt road again. One side of the road went this way, one side went this way. So Chief Chenevis Lockta got into the fire water, riding his horse down through there, the wide open, so to say. He wanted to go one side, the horse wanted to go the other, so they hit the tree and killed the horse and the, the chief. Huh. And they buried him right there. It's probably less than a quarter of a mile from that point. Down the road there is where the old grave is right now. 
But uh, it's another tale too, McKeldry is called a community again, it was never a city or town, but McKeldry was owned by the old man McKeldry, which he lived up on the hill there, the house is still there, the slave quarters are still there from yesteryear. But back in those days when the Indians were still here, Chief Chinnipiselacta went to Mr. McKeldry and told him, I had a dream, Mr. McKeldry, that you gave me that pair of white horses you had. <laughs> so old man McKeldry gives him the pair of white horses. So later on in life, he goes and tells the chief, Chief, I had a dream that you gave me this whole valley. So he had no other recourse except to give the valley to the old man McKeldry. As much, as he could, as much yeah. land as he could ride as he could around ride from sun to sun. Yeah, huh. in a day's time. So which included that whole part of that valley there where this the community, which is all kind of gone away too, of McKeldy. Another Indian tale, I guess. But, you know, there I grew up with a lot of these old Indian tales from my granddaddy, especially my granddaddy man. He was into this folklore, right. history of the community, history of a, lot, of a lot of other things. Really a smart old dude. I guess he never had a clock in his life, but he told time with the sun and the stars and whatever and again he spent a lot of time outside with this range rider job that he had with this people that owned all that land back in those days but uh, those Indian stories that I've told like I said I remember seeing in fact I had the life magazine at one time the story about the old Indian chief how he died they called it the first death or DWI death is what it was called what was that back in the 1800s, I guess? Uh, I don't know when. I don't know. When, I don't remember now the you know for all the details of it. But I, and I, again, I don't know when when uh, Chief Chinnam Salakta died. There's not any dates on his on his you know his Marker, thing there. Yeah. No. That would be something, I guess, if you're into these Indian things, is to find that and take pictures of that. 